Now, I want to talk about uh, the uh, certain patterns in life of different Native American tribes. Well, no. First of all, they're not Native American and they're most certainly not Indian. They are big Turtle Islander tribal natives. But North America is literally a big giant turtle. You know, you have um, Nunavut, Nunavut, which means the land, that's the head. And then you have Alaska, that's, that's the left front leg of the big turtle. And then you have the, uh, 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 up around, uh, oh, Quebec and Labrador, that's, that's, um, that's the right upper leg, and then down below, you, you have Baja, California, that's the lower left leg, and then you have Florida, that's the lower right leg, and then you have Mexico, that's the tail, and the, the Central American land strips, the rest of the tail, connecting it to big elephant head island. And it's literally a big giant elephant head. Because the story goes, the story goes that during the time of Odysseus, uh, when he returned from the Great War in Troy, and he was, you know, he was a prisoner, of the Cyclops, you know, in, inside of the cave. Um, you know, they had to find a way. They had to find a way to get out of the cave. I mean, how? How on earth would they get out of the cave? It's like, I don't know. But, but. They had to find a way out of the cave. So this is what they did. They took what a long pole, as it were, and they sharpened it, you know, and they they but burned it in the fire, and they poked out the cyclops' eye. That eye is like the third eye of mankind. Before that, there was a giant elephant head that connected to the rest of Europe. So when they poked out the eye of the Cyclops, they put out the third eye of mankind, and the elephant head, you know, the rest of Eurasia, the, you know, Japan was the tail, you know, and Japan was used to be connected to by a land bridge, to uh, the Korean Peninsula, that was the tale, you know, and the Ryukyu Islands uh, were, were part of that tale as well, and the Ryukyuan people, the Amami Islanders, the Okinawans, they were the founding father people of the Polynesians and the Melanesians, they're, they're all interconnected, they, they originally came from the Ryukyu Islands, but anyway, I'm digressing. So. A lot of that was remnants of the tale, a lot of it was remnants of Lemuria, the lost island of Mu in the Indian and or Pacific Oceans. Um, uh, but uh, Africa was part of the great elephant body as well, and so when the third eye was put out by Odysseus and his men, when they put out the Cyclops' eye, the head was severed, and so what remains of where the neck is, is is the, the, the little stubble the little stubble so uh, the, the stubble where where the elephant's head was was um the island of the mighty the island of giants where king bran king bran the 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 the, the, the great raven king of britain the island of britain and then the little stubble of the the iberian the Celtiberians of Iberia and, and, the, and the Gaul, you know, that, that, that's, that's where the elephant head once was. And so the elephant head drifted across the water, across the water, all the, you know, it kept drifting away. 
But there was a, 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 a the, the divine feminine, the elephant head and the elephant's body. That's the sacred masculine. The 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 the, 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 the divine feminine is 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 the big giant turtle island. She's the great mother, and so she felt bad for, for the sacred masculine. For the elephant who lost his head because of some some Grishman uh, from some war with Trojans or some Cooper, and you know, and so she took pity and she firmly attached the elephant's head to her tail, and that is why. And so the big turtle, uh, the, the, the tribal natives. I don't like the term Indian. I don't like the term Native American. They're tribal natives. And the ones of the Big Elephant Head or Big Elephant Head tribal natives. It's not just native. They're tribals. I mean, we're not all tribals, although I guess we wore our words some time in a way. But you know what I mean. Indigenous tribal. Tribal. A tribe of indigenous natives. Tribal natives. So, uh, we now that we've gotten that up, and we're literally on the back of a big giant turtle, the, the divine feminine, uh, which is connecting to the sacred masculine of a big giant elephant head, which she sure saved it. You know, if she hadn't have saved it, it would have floated away. Well, anyway, I digress. Um, so, where should I begin here? So, the different native tribal natives of Big Turtle Island consists of a lot, lot of different group families. There's the Algonquian. A lot of people say Algonquin or Algonquin. It's Algonquian. And that refers to a large group of linguistic branch family. They're all Altaic Mongoloid. You know, we say, I don't like to get into labels of color, but you say the red man is the extension of the yellow man. And so the true map of the earth is Europe, where the elephant's head used to be, and the island of the mighty, the island, the Emerald Isle, and you know, you have Africa, and then go leading to the rest of Africa, and then you have a Asia, Near East Asia, Central Asia, uh, Indian subcontinent, uh, leading into the Far East, leading to Mongolia, Siberia, and the Siberian tribes that the Russians discovered, such as the Teriot, Koryak, the Evenk, the Naganasan, the Chukchi, the Samoya, the Saha, the Goldi, the Dukka, the Buryats, the Nenets, the Kets. The, you know, they are very similar reindeer herding people living in teepees, much like the Sami, who are Finno Ugric Uralic. So the Finno Ugric Uralic peoples are distantly the cousins of the Altaic peoples. There's the Altaic Turkic and the Altaic Mongoloid. And so it leads, so the Japan, the rising sun, but there's, of course, there's the Sino Tibetan peoples too. Now, but then there's, the, of course, in Japan, you have the Ainu. The Ainu are a very Caucasian, very lighter skinned people with big, bushy beards, and women dye their lips blue, you know. But the thing is, the Ainu people, even though they are lighter skinned people, they came from Africa, southern Africa, a long time ago, their ancestors, and they were darker skinned. They were black. Well, it's, I don't like that term. Negroid, whatever, I don't know. Very dark skinned African, let's just put it that way. And they came across the Indian Ocean and they landed on um, the Asiatic mainland and they traveled, they, their ancestors traveled across the, uh, the Asiatic mainland until they came to the Korean Peninsula. And they journeyed, and that's when the tail of the elephant was connected, you see. So they journeyed across the elephant's tail to the Japanese islands, and they, they are called the Emishi, the Emishi. Oh, and then it became, eventually became the Ainu, you know. But eventually, they, they, they evolved because they came from a very hot part of the world, of, of a native people who are used to having darker skin tone and whatnot. But, but their genetics evolved, you see. But even to this day, the Ainu people, they have like um, frizzy hair. Frizzier hair, you know, unlike the Japanese and unlike an Indo-European person, they do, they have frizzier hair, frizzier beards, they're hairier all over their chests, you know, and um, so they became lighter skin because they, 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 you know, I don't believe in macroevolution, but microevolution, there are certain 
even mankind has evolved microly, you know, different shapes of the, the different uh, the, the genetics of the area of the world. So yes, the Ainu were are the Black Asians, <laughs> or oh, the African Asians, uh, even though they're Caucasoid and they're more Caucasoid and lighter skinned than than uh, than the um, the Japanese. Who are archaic mongoloid? Now I was just going to get to that. So we have the Far East, we have the Near East, Central Asia, the Indian subcontinent, who are Dravidian, dark skinned Dravidian ancestry. But of course, the Aryans came into India and conquered, and they conquered the darker skinned Dravidians. Same old story. What can you know? No, you know, like you know, the Aryans are one of the most diverse peoples, kind of like how the Algonquian linguistic branch family are the most diverse Altaic Mongoloid tribal natives of Big Turtle Island. Um, so, so anyway, you have the Far East now, Near East Asia, Central Asia, Indian subcontinent, Far East, and then, then finally, you go across the Bering Strait from Siberia. From the net, from the, the, the what the, the peoples up there, the Yupiks and the Nupiaks. Of course, the Nupiks and the Nupiaks are uh, the Mongoloid people, the Eskimo peoples, but they also the ones who live in Alaska on the eastern side of the Bering Strait. And so, Big Turtle Island and the Big Elephant Head Island are the far, far east. It is Oriental. It's not Occidental. So when you go honoring the medicine by Ken Cohen, Native American healing for the spirit, the shamans, this is all Oriental, this is all far, far East. And the red man, if you have to use labels and colors, which I don't like to, but an extension of that. So when people in this modern day and age talk about the West and Western and very Western and not just Europe now, but, you know, with the... Um, United, the one Reichs, you know, the United States, the work ruler, and, you know, the white man, you say, the Wasichu, you know, and so it's very Western and Occidental, but it's not Occidental, it's an Accidental that is Occidental, you know, but it's, there's nothing Occidental about Big Turtle Island and Big Elephant Head Island, not at all. In fact, for that matter, you can see the Occident and the influence of the, Re the Renaissance, which is the most heinous and evil period. And then we'll have to wait for another video, I suppose, but uh, the, one of the most evil periods to ever happen to mankind was the Renaissance. And the post-Renaissance man, which led to the ages of discovery and the dreadful development of metal-based firearms and uh, 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 the age of reason. The so-called Age of Reason that Baron Munchausen was so strongly opposed to, and leading into the industrial ages of the 19th, 20th, 20th centuries, and so on and so forth. But I digress. So anyway, we've established that Big Turtle Island is Oriental. It's the far, far east. Everything about it. Manitouism, Powas, the Powas shamans of the, the Elg Northeast Woodland Algonquian tribes, uh, the Iroquoian religions, the Handsome Lake religion, the older uh, Iroquois, Haudenosaunee religion, and um, um, I wanted to get on, there are other branch, native branch people from the Altaic Mongoloid peoples, and uh, the, you know, they all share the Altaic Turkey, Altaic Mongoloid of, of Asia, and the Altaic Mongoloid of Big Turtle Island and Big Elephant Head. The far, far east, along with the Finno Ugric Uralic peoples, who are more Caucasian, like the Ainu, but they're not, they're not black, they're not um, darker skinned African who evolved and became lighter like the Ainu, though. That's Ainu are not related. If anything, the Japanese are related. The Japanese, the Koreans, the Mongolians, the Siberian tribes, the Turkic tribes, the Turkic peoples, the Finno Ugric peoples, the Magyars, the Estonians, the Finns, the Sami, and anyway, we're going back to the Big Turtle Island tribes now. There are other branches besides Algonquian. Algonquian is the largest group. And you have them all the way out west to northwestern California. Uh, the Karak and the Yaruk peoples are Algonquian. Those are the most, those are the one the Algonquian branch tribes of Big Turtle Island who, um, who live on Big Turtle Island. The Karaks and the Yaruks of, of northwestern California. 
Uh, most Californian tribes are very unique, very separate from any other. The most separate and most unique out of all the Altaic peoples, tribal natives of Big Turtle Island, are the northwestern tribes, such as the Chinook and the Haida and the Makar and the, the Simshian and the Lingit and the Velakula and the uh, Susquamish, Duwamish, Chief, Saddle, Chief Seattle's tribe and the, um, the Quileutes, uh, the Selel Waltooth Salish. And the, um, what else? Uh, I said, it will come to him. I said Makar. I said Haida. Okay. Um, Chinook. Bellacula. Kwakiutl. Kwakiutl. Which, which in, in, in Canada, Canada, is, um, it means the village. It comes from, I think it comes from, uh, 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 I want to say, uh, like Iroquoian. Because the Iroquoian were another branch people. We will you know the Iroquois by the Iroquois Confederacy peoples of upstate New York and Ontario and the Finger Lakes. I think I think it's the Finger Lakes. I don't know. The, 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 the Seneca, the Sayaga, C A Y U G A, Sayaga, Sayaga. A lot of people for the longest time have mispronounced this. It's not Cayuga, like an old fashioned car, motor car horn. It's Sayag, Say is soft C. Unlike in Tolkien, which is k, k, C's are always k. This C is soft, like cellular, Sayog, Sayoga. So the Sayoga, the Seneca, the Tascaue are the people of the long shirts. They were the last to join the Iroquois Confederacy. But anyway, I was saying Canada. It means village in the Wyandot, Wendat, Huron people. The Wyandot, Wendat, Huron are a Iroquoian people. Yes, and um, it means the village. The Ottawa, I think it's an Algonquian term, I don't know what tribe, it means traders, so city of the traders. And of course, Manitoba is, uh, I'm not sure what Ontario means. Manitoba means the land of the great spirit, land of the creator, land of Manitou, you know. Um, so... Other branch peoples between is Algonquian, the largest, and the Iroquoian are the Suin. The Suin are very, actually, very closely linked with the Iroquoian. The Iroquoian and the Suin peoples. And then their languages. The Iroquoian languages are very similar and closer to one another than they are to Algonquian. Now, the story about... It starts off with the Abenaki. The Abenaki, some, and then, the, 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 well... It's, it's confusing, I know, about the Abenakis who live in Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Southern Quebec, um, uh, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and I think Nova Scotia. But the thing is, the greater term is the Wabanaki, also called Wabanaka, the Wabanaka, or the Wabanaki. In the Penobscot language, the, na the overall name for themselves is Twe Wabanagigig. The Chwe Wabanagigig, the Chwe Wabanagigig, or the Wabanaka Wabana, Wabanaki, are the Wabanaki Confederacy, the Wabanaka Confederacy, and so up in Nova Scotia you have the Mi'kmaq, and you know, and then and then in uh, New, uh, New Brunswick, uh, past Maine, I guess the the Mali seat, Mali seat Wabanaki, and up in Maine the Passamaquoddy, and then the Banawabskig, who are the Penobscot Wabanaki. Those are a lot of eastern bands of Wabanaki. I don't know. Then there's the term the Abenaki, who are a different branch, because there's the Penacook Abenaki, who were parts of southern New, uh, South uh, Western New Hampshire, South. Eastern Vermont, bordering with uh, uh, northern Massachusetts, the Penacook, the Penacook Abenaki, and then in in south uh, south um, western Vermont, going into around the Albany region and far western Massachusetts, with the Mahicans, the Mahican. It's a, pe even people who, who realize James Fenimore Cooper's mistake, and he combined the two names. The Mohegans of Quinecticut, they're Algonquian too, I'll get into them later, and the Mahican. It's M-A-I. Both words have the same root. They both mean like the wolf people, but they're completely too different because the Mah Mah Mahican who in James Fenimore Cooper's ridiculous book about the last of the Mohicans, well, whoever the hell they were, 
the Mahicans, the actual Mahicans are still around today. They have a reservation in somewhere in Wisconsin. Um, and they were very close, to, just like in his ridiculous book, Last of the Mohicans, the Mahican tribe are closely related to the Leni Lenape, the true people, the Leni Lenape. And the Leni Lenape are, of course, featured in James Venema Cooper's book. Um, and then uh, the the the, Mo, the Mohegans, Mohegans are connected to the Pequots. They're an Algonquin people that didn't enter into New England until about the 1590s or so. Um, the, 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 the Mohicans had their capital, I think, on an island at a place called Shodok. Shodok, S-C-H. O D A C or something. It's around near Albany, um, and so they were around that area uh, of the state of New York, southwestern Vermont, and far western Massachusetts. Um, and so, but Uncas, Uncas, there was a real life Uncas. He was a Mohegan of the Mohegan Pequots. Not related to this this Mohegan Uncas and Chinage Cook. I don't know who they were. <laughs> no such thing. Complete bollocks, the highest daughter. But anyway, the Lenny Lenape, who were closely connected with the Mahicans, Mahikin, they were the founding mother tribe of all the Algonquian peoples. The founding mother tribe of the uh, all Suin peoples was the Hochangara. The Hochangara, who called themselves the people of the true word. Um, they also known as the Hochunk, the Hochunk. The, a, a particular type of motor car, unfortunately, was named after them, called the Winnebago. The Winnebago, and then they have a res they're the founding mother tribe of all Suin peoples, and they, they, they have, they live somewhere in southern Minnesota today. Um, they are word for the supreme creator, the supreme creator, the grandfather, the one, the real, the great spirit, great mysteries, Ma Maona. Maona, M-A-O-N-A, -A, Maona. And Maona, no one's ever seen the true face of Maona, but Maona is known through his works. You know him through his works. You know him, him through the things he's created. You know, through the acts of people, animals. Maona, he is, he is transcendent, unconditional loving love. He's outside of all time, of all things. And so... There was a story, I think there was, um, there was a U.S. soldiers under William Henry Harrison, I believe it was, I don't know. It was during the war with, with, um, Black Hawk, uh, the Meskwaki Asaki. The Meskwaki and the Asaki are the Sock and Fox tribe of Illinois. They're closely connected to the Illiniwek, Illiniwek, Illinois tribe. Um, then all of those peoples, all of those Algonquian peoples of Illinois, the Illiniwek Illinois tribe, the Sock and Fox, the Meskwaki Asaki, they were branched off because, you see, <coughs> from the Cahokian mound dwellers, and whenever, whenever, a good majority of the time, whenever a native people gets too high and mighty, they get too civilized, they get too, they build big cities, and they build temples, and they build very structured ways of living, and they start to get corrupted in their religion, in their way of life. And so, like the Mayans, when the Spaniards first came, and they found the Mayan people living in the jungles, like like, like at the end of uh, Mel Gibson's Apocalypto, which had many other historical problems, which I won't go into now. But, but uh, you know, Jaguar Pass, you know, the return, the, his people were raided by the city dwellers. And when they're being chased by by those two Mayans from the city who are chasing after them after they escape after not being sacrificed, the two the two people who are chasing them, the two two Mayans, they see something of their own nature within the Spaniards, you know. And they're drawn to them. Jaguar Pa and his family, he says, No, let's go back and live our old way of life, a simpler way of life. And so those tribes just like the Hopewell peoples became the Shawnee and lived the simple, more simpler way of life in the Ohio River Valley. Tecumseh's people, panther crouching, of the another Algonquian people of the Northeast Woodlands, not the Northeast Coastal Woodland, but... So, 
Uh, and then, because the, the Hopewell Alg uh, and so, uh, ancient Algonquian peoples drove out the Adena, and the Adena Algonquian peoples entered into New England, and they became what's known as the Nipmucks, the Wampanoags, uh, the R and N dialects of southern New England Algonquian. They became the Abenaki, you know, Western Eastern Abenaki, and various Wabanaki peoples, and so on and so forth, until finally the other, the last Algonquian the tribe entered in 1590 with the Pequots and the Mohegans. So anyway, so the Mississippian peoples became like there, they died out. Their, their civilization, the Mound Dwellers, died out down there, the Mississippian Mound Dwellers, and they became peoples like the Muscogean peoples and other, the five so-called civilized tribes that, that the white man called them. Of course, the Jalagi, the Cherokee, the Aniawea are an Iroquoian people of the southeast and the Appalachians. Uh, the Chickasaw are southeast Asian people who are Algonquian. But the Choctaw, the other five so-called civilized tribes, the Choctaw, the Nyirk Solgi, or people of the peninsula, those are the Seminole, they were, they were a conglomerate of other Muscogean peoples. The Timuqua, the Calusa, the Appalachian, the Natchez were all Muscogean. And then you have the Choctaw and Muscogean, and then you have the Muscogee, Muscogee proper people, who are the Creek, the Creek people, the Muscogee Creeks. So they're all Muscogean. And those were the, I think, the, 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 the descendants of the Mississippian Mound Dwellers. Of course, the, the, the Aniawea, the Jalagi, Cherokee, and the uh, Chickasaw, who are Alg Algonquian, were, were also uh, uh, part of the five civilized tribes because they developed their own newspapers. Oh, wow, that's so special. And of course, they probably got more into corporal punishment, capital punishment. I know. Most tribes very, very use capital punishment, even in regard to murder, like the Lakota. The Lakota Sioux tribe, and a lot of the Plains tribes in particular, very rarely kill people for killing people. <coughs> if, if a murder was committed, or rape was committed, the option to the closest relative of the person who was killed would be given the option. You can tear off and take the offender into the off somewhere into the prairie and extract vengeance and shoot a person, or you can show mercy, and they'll be banished further from the tribe. And more often than not, the latter, the latter was practiced more often. Um, same with the Inuit up north, the Kalalit of Kalalit Nunat, um, which is per technically part of Big Turtle Island, but it's an island that's offshooted from the Big Turtle itself. So, but it's still part, it's, I guess, I guess you could say it's like, the, the, the fodder, the fodder, the food, the food for the big turtle. And that's where one of Father Christmas, Father Christmas, who is literally real, literally real, just like this, but of a different substance, who lives on a different interdimension of time and space. He uh, he has one of his male workshops in his, uh, up in northern Kalali, Nunat. Uh, yes, yes. So, um, where was I? So, yes, a lot of the Inuit, if a murder was committed, they would be banished. Permanently, they have to, they couldn't live with the community anymore. Corporal capital punishment was never used. Corporal punishment is very, also very used, especially with children. Never. Um, but the five so-called similar tribes, if a murder was committed, they would be taken out with a rifle, with a rifle, and pff, ah, be done away with. I guess that's why they, one of the reasons why they were called the five, why five, five so-called civilized tribes. Right? <laughs> so uh, I'm. Um, I'm rambling now. I think we'll give it a break. We'll talk more about the tribes of Big Turtle Island and the like um, uh, later, at a later date. Um, I hope you all bid you all a very good uh, evening and I'll see you in the fortnight or <laughs> whenever I feel like it. <laughs>